Hey everyone, how are you today? So it is Tuesday and I needed a break. I pretty much got everything done. I'm just pricing now and I had to get up and walk away because I've got a lot of stuff. So I thought I'd try something and obviously you know me, I'm going to make flowers. So I made a flower. I'm going to make a flower using cad yellow, white, and peacock blue. Those are my go-to colors all the time. This is all Primo Sculpey. And then I thought I'd make a leaf um, and try and combine a cane into a flower with a stem. I've never done that before, so I thought, why not? We've got the time. Let's do it. So I'm going to go ahead and run these through the pasta machine and get a nice little Skinner blend out of all those. And then we'll try and figure out how we're going to put this together. My main reason for doing this is I only tried that Cernet that one time on that um, that faux turquoise. So I wanted to see how it works with flowers because that's mainly the reason I bought this. So I will be right back. Alrighty, so we've got both of our strips done. So this is going to be the leaf, obviously. And I want the light green in the middle. So how are you all doing this week? I know it's Tuesday. Just started. Hopefully it's all great for you guys. I have been just busy, busy, busy getting stuff done for the show. And we had a little bit of reflection, you know, over the weekend. October, so you know, is like a month that shouldn't exist. I hate October. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> Um, I lost my mom in October, I lost my dad in October, and I lost my sister in October. My mom and my sister were, um, they died exactly two weeks, two weeks apart, exactly two weeks apart. So, obviously I hate October, and then we just had an anniversary, and I was with my daughter over the weekend, but, you know, five years ago. October 1st, she and her friends headed out to a three-day country music concert she was so excited about going to, and she had a great time until, you know, until she didn't, and the wonderful kind of odd stuff is my daughter's got really good intuition, she gets that from me, <laughs> um, on two nights of the concert, two days, I mean, it was a three-day festival, so it was an all-day thing, all-night thing, I think, um, you know, she was at the right side of the stage with her boyfriend and her friends, but the last night, she, I don't know, she had an inkling, I had a weird feeling or whatever, and they ended up moving to the left side of the stage. That decision probably saved her life. Because that was the night that somebody who was very angry decided to go into a hotel room and um, start shooting at everybody. So my daughter was part of history that night. She was a survivor of the Las Vegas shootings. And um, it's weird because I, rem I remember the phone call like it was yesterday. But before I get into that, let me finish this. So, um, I'm going to make strips of these and kind of striate them. I, I know you've seen this video before from some of my other flowers. So, the reason I am not bringing this, um, reducing this smaller top and bottom is because if I do this, you're going to end up squishing um, this yellow into the white and into the blue and so you're not going to see the white so when I reduce I reduce it this way because all I want to do is make it long but I don't want to lose all that center there's not a lot of white in there as it is and I don't want to lose it so the way I say to do this is make sure you can see all three colors as you're reducing it if you see only one color then you know you've got it wrong okay so just do this and just we're going to make this as thin as we can so that we can run this to the pasta machine like this to make our strips. So you'll see as I'm going. But yeah. Um, <laughs> my daughter's so funny. She had a boyfriend that she met. Oh God, how old was she? She was 16. 
started dating this guy and then my daughter broke her back in a motocross um, race and she didn't break her neck thank god she had a neck brace on which is probably what broke her back um my husband thinks that i think well, i'd rather break her back than her neck because she would have been paralyzed um but she broke her t1 all the way down to her t4 <laughs> and um so this is a new boy for now that she's dating um they're still together they've been together for what five six years five years now um but it was the first trip to vegas with them and stuff and it wasn't a really good start to her trip because I got mad at her because she never called me when she got there. And that's a must. You know, when you get to your destination, just call mom. Let me know you're safe. And she hadn't. And I was worried, 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 worried. And, um, so yeah, there was a little heated exchange there when she finally did call that I was upset and stuff like that. So... I didn't really talk to her a whole lot after that. I just got pictures of the concert you know, and stuff like that, but that last night she called me, and she's in tears, and the first thing that came to my mind was, uh-oh, her and Matt broke up, and <laughs> I couldn't get a word out of her, she was crying, um, she couldn't tell me what was going on, it was just like, it's okay, just tell me what's going on, and that's when she just said, somebody's shooting at us, and you know, you hear that out of your kid's mouth, and you're like, what are you talking about? You know, who would be shooting at you? It just was unconceivable to even think of anything. Okay, so see how I thinned that all out and made that really long strip? So that way we put it through the pasta machine this way. Now I'm going to cut it all up and we'll striate it. But, um, you know, this was right at the, after it happened, so the news had no idea what was going on yet. Um, I turned on the news. Couldn't see anything. There was nothing being reported. And um, she said that she couldn't find, you know, her friends. She goes, you know, Spencer and I don't know the other names, but, you know, we can't find them. We're, we're going back to look for them. And um, I told her, no. <laughs> I told her, you got you to gotta run. You just got to go. And um, eventually she calmed down enough and they ran. You know, what else could they do? You know, she's a nurse, though, so that was a really tough decision to leave everybody. But they ran, and they ran down the strip, and she said there were people that were running down the strip saying the shooter's coming, the shooter's coming. So they had no idea at that point how many shooters there were. And because Vegas is just loaded with a million different hotels and stuff like that, that a gunshot goes and it ricochets off of, you know, off of every hotel. And it sounds like shots are coming from everywhere at that time. So eventually... They end up at something called, I think it's called Mild High. I'm not really sure of the name, but it's a little area by Planet Hollywood, if you've ever been um, to Vegas. And it's, I think it was called Mile High or something like that, or the Mile, or something with Mile in it. And there was a store in there, so, you know, her and her boyfriend went in there. And... Everybody was still on the strip. Nobody knew what was going on. There's people walking the strips as if there's nothing going on, you know. They're just, they didn't know at that time. And so they kind of told everybody, run. You know, there's a shooter. And um, so anyways, they ended up staying in there. The store ended up going on lockdown. And pretty much everybody started going wherever they could to hide out, basically. Because nobody knew anything. And then finally the police showed up and told them, stay in here. Um, we'll come get you when it's safe to come out. But yeah, it was just weird. It just, you know, it's not something I expected. Not something she expected, you know. She saw people all around her falling. You know, there's blood everywhere. You can smell it. You can feel it. So this weekend was the anniversary of that, so... You know, we went out to dinner and stuff and just try to keep her mind off of it. But I think I reflected more on it than she did. You know, she's gone back a few times and she has a hard time going anywhere now with like large crowds of concerts because of that. Which is really sad. Stupid coward, you know. But she's getting better. And she's gone to the memorial that they made. 
for everybody, but she and her boyfriend had a lot of survivor's guilt. You know, I guess that's normal, but... Yeah, it was just a crazy day. But she's alive. She's well. And, you know, I thank God that she's still with us. And feel really bad for all the people that didn't make it home. A lot of her friends went. A lot of co-workers went. You know, I know a lot of people that went. Thank God I don't know anybody that passed away. So, dealing with that, and then towards the end of the month, I know it's going to be rough on me with my parents and all that. So, you're just going to see me in here a lot more, because this just really helps. So, what we're doing with this, basically, is just making this into five petals. I haven't wrapped it in the cernet yet, so probably I should probably do that now. So let me go ahead and condition some cernet and we'll be right back. Okay, so I changed my mind. <laughs> I'm going to leave the petals alone and I'm just going to wrap the outside of them. I had a thought of wrapping around each petal, but I don't think it's going to give it the depth that I that I need. It'll just make the petals look funny, I think. So I'm only going one inch on these instead of one and a half inch. Because I don't want to make this cane really big because then I'll have to use a lot of cernet in order to... Um, make it into a circle or a square or whatever I decide it's going to end up being. So just going to make sure all of this is even. I'm just going to kind of bend up the, the sides a little bit. Make it a little bit more round. Okay, and this has got to be pulled out just a little more. That should be good. Nope, five inches, not six. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, and you're kind of plugged in, so let me pull this out. Hopefully I don't drop the phone. Oh, I really need a new camera or new setup. I really want the new phone. My son has the Samsung 22, and oh my gosh, it's wonderful. The problem with mine is the Samsung 20, um, the Note 20, but they took out the macro in the camera. So it makes it really hard to take pictures, especially small. Stuff like um, jewelry, which I do all the time. So, his, I don't know if they brought it back or not, or, or, or what's the big change. But it's definitely an awesome camera. So, I want to go back and get that, hopefully soon. I think I got three or four more months on my contract. So we're going to have to wait till that's done because I don't want to pay through my teeth. Alright, so we're going to just put the center. I'm just making green. I'm not really worried about getting it all fancy. This might be too small, but we're going to see what happens here. So I want a little bit of opening there. So I want to put a stem in here. Okay, we're going to turn that around. Okay. Alright, we're going to make this stem a little smaller. So 
Actually, this is not what I was thinking of doing. I was going to make a flower and add the stems. But now I'm wondering if I have to combine it all now. Unless I put a little bit of green on the bottom of this flower. So if I did that. Okay, so that's all going to have to kind of do that. And then I'm going to do the stem. So I'm going to reduce this and I'll be right back. Okay, so you know how you reduce things and then you get all these things in your head. And this isn't how I've envisioned what I wanted to do. So basically, yes, I want to make the flower and I want to make, you know, the stem. But... I want to make a bunch of flowers and a bunch of stems and at first I was going to make the flower first but then I realized if I make the flower and reduce it it's going to be wrapped with the translucent and then trying to put the stems in there I could probably make it work but it's not what I want so don't be mad at me <laughs> we're going to switch this around a little bit And this is going to be reduced small anyways. I don't know how easy this is going to be to play with. I can cut them and try and make a half an inch. But I know that that's going to be so hard to reduce and keep the shape. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to reduce all these to 2 inch and cut it half again. So I'll be right back. Okay, so there's my two flowers. And the one thing about this, the absolute most important part, is that every petal is touching that stem. So we're going to take some of this cernet. And this is going to make our flower a little bigger. So we're just making this into a triangle here. And I'm going to show you one and then I'm probably going to pause this because this is going to be a long project as it is. So I don't want to have to bore you with all the repetitive stuff. So basically, like just any other flower, you're going to put your translucent into the middle of the petals. And that's going to add a little more volume, which will help these spread a little more. But the worst part is making sure that all your flowers are touching that middle. And I know this flower looks really ugly on the ends. It's just getting really soft. Um, it'll look better once it's cut. So I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, we're going to make this thinner. And it might take a little bit of manipulating to get these guys in here the way you want them. Okay, so this one's moved, so you want to push him back. Okay, this one's kind of... Uh, it's just because it's the end. Everything else looks good. It's just the end because of my fingers. Alright, so we're just going to do this one flower, and then we'll hit pause, and I'll do the other flower. And I'm going to kind of make that a little bit thinner. And again, I'm going to make sure that that's all touching. Okay. Okay, so this makes it a little easier right here. Uh, 
uh, I don't know what happened there, but I need it a little bit more wider. Flat around the top. Okay, so now we've got all those in there. So that's one flower. And then these are all touching. So that's good. So this, we have to make room for the stem. So let me do this flower, but at least we got that one set up. Let me do the same on this one and we'll be right back. Okay. So now we want to make the stem. So we are going to take one of these out. Uh, yeah, see, that's with the the sticky cernet. You guys all warned me. Thank you guys for all the information on the cernet. I do appreciate you letting me know how to work it. Because I honestly did not know that it was so sticky. Okay, so how high do we want this flower? I don't know. I'm going to go a little lower. Okay. So this was that, obviously, the, the other cane that we made. It's kind of like how thick do I want to go. I think we might have to go just a little wider, but I don't want to go too wide. Let's see how that works. Okay, I'm going to go a little longer. We're going to put this, oh, this is going to be a really big cane. I might have to <laughs> rethink this one. Holy moly. See, this is, this is my problem is, yeah, this one's going to be a little wide. It's going to be a lot of cernet. We're going to just put this right here. Okay. And we're going to do the same with this. We're going to make this wide. Yeah, you try and play it in your head and. You know what you got to do, but then it's like, oh, darn it. What did I do? So we're just going to kind of measure these so that they're pretty much even. Okay. Oh, let's fill the inside of this with a little bit of translucent. Because obviously we don't want any space in there. And again, we're not really getting fancy or anything. We're just filling up all the little holes. So. And I don't want the cane too big. And so I'm putting these canes kind of close to each other. Okay. Now. I'm going to take this. And we need four leaves. And once we get all this center, oh, yes, I will pause it again. And I will wrap all this with translucent. I'll kind of show you how to do it. Although I'm just winging it. I don't even know how to do it. So we're going to cut this in half again. Okay. Now we got some of that black right there. Okay. And we're going to bring this down a little bit. I'm going to go into... I don't know. Is this going to do two of them? I don't know. Gonna 
have to cut out two more. So we're just kind of setting these wherever. I like that. Now, part of me should just do one and then combine them, but yeah, we're going to do two. Hopefully it makes a little more sense now that you can see it laid out. do okay so we're just gonna leave it just like that okay so now basically for the rest of the flower we've <laughs> we've got to make this round oh my gosh what was I thinking um I mean, I can have this kind of, yeah, kind of float in like that. Oh, that would be cute, right? If I put them together like that. That actually might look really good. Hmm. Kind of a twin flower, right? So now we're just playing with it. And then that's going to have to move a little bit so I can get some translucent in between there. Oops. Sorry, guy. Didn't mean to squish you like that. Boy, I really squished them. I'm just hoping these are going to be big enough to... Once I reduce this all down small, how much of that green is going to show, I don't know. But you kind of want to make it proportional. Yeah, we're making that leaf again. Alrighty, so we're just going to leave it alone. Okay, so now basically all we're going to do is we're going to take this white translucent and we're going to just start filling up every little area of this. And the reason I keep pushing it smaller is because I don't want a huge cane and it's going to be huge as it is. So let me get started on this and I'll be back and show you some of our progress. Alright, so I just want to come back and show you what I'm doing so far. 
So as you can see, all we're doing is taking the translucent, okay, and we're just putting it around all the colored pieces. So I just got one flower to go and then cover this and then this is going to be a square. So I'm going to try and make it just to right here. I don't think it'll be that much clay if I do it in a square. If I did it in a circle, yeah, it'd be way too big. So this is going to be squared up. So I'm going to go ahead and condition another thing of Cernet translucent and I'll be back when we finally have our square. All right, guys, so we use that whole block of Cernet. And as I'm wrapping it, I'm like, I should have wrapped it in white. I should have just wrapped it in white, you know? I made it a color, made it its own little veneer. I should have wrapped it in white. But I had translucent on my mind from the very beginning. I still don't know why. You know, and I keep thinking, oh my God, this is a lot of clay if it doesn't turn out the way I wanted to, but you know what, it's gonna be okay. And you're never gonna know until you make something like this, how it's gonna turn out. So I've got this all into a nice square. And there's really not a whole lot that I can take off. Yeah, this one's like right there. So we're gonna put him back on there. And we're just gonna leave it alone. So now we are going to reduce this and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to reduce it, but we're going to reduce this and then we'll be back to show you how it turns out. Alrighty, well we're back and we're extremely nervous because this was really easy to reduce, but I'm heavy handed. So I have no idea what the inside is going to look like. I just know that, um, yeah, that was um, an interesting cane to reduce. I don't even know where the good starts. Yeah, we're still going. So... Two, four, six, eight. And I do know there's a lot of waste, unfortunately. So it could be an abstract flower. Okay, we're just going to cut it in half. All right, we're going to cut it at the four. Are you ready to see the mess that I just made? All right, let's see what it looks like together. So there's our burst flowers. So what I wanted to do, you know, was put it together. I mean, it doesn't look too bad, but you can barely, you can barely tell those are stems. All right, and they're so close to each other. So what happens when you take a round flower, encase it in a square, and then try and get square out of it. So what we're going to do here is we're kind of just going to make a veneer with it. I mean, you can leave it as it is. It probably would be fine. But I'm going to take just a little bit of it and cut it in half. But I want to put a little bit more translucent in the center. So like with this, uh, we'll go one inch and one inch. And then we'll save these for just the way they are. Make this into a three. I probably should have done this before I cut it, but it might have been easier. Okay. I'm going to 
take this, just put a little bit of space in between those two. And we're going to do the same with this. So basically we're just making this into a veneer and that way you can just lay it across something I think next time we'll be I don't know enclosed in a white I will definitely go a lot smaller because um, then I'll make it round instead of square but pushing all the ends together in the square it kind of pushed the the flowers a little bit more than I wanted to but now you know how to make a flower with a stem and then just take from my mistakes and fix them before you even start yours. And yours should come out really nice. I got a lot of waste, so I might turn that into a Natasha bead or I don't know, think of something to do with them. Let's cut the end off of there. Okay. And there's what you got. So yeah. Definitely go round. And um. Yeah. I'm not really sure what happened with the stems. I mean the stems look okay. But I probably shouldn't have connected them together. Because now it just looks like a swirly line. But it's kind of abstract right. So I'm okay with it. But anyways, that was our cane today. I hope you liked it. So this is our, our little, I'm going to call them burst flowers. And when you lay this down, let me show you something real quick. You know, because the, the two ends are kind of iffy, they'll actually look like a flower again if you just pull the center out. So that's why I'm not really concerned with it because now I've got my whole flower again. You just have to pull out the edges. So I'm going to uh, probably bake this on something. Um, what's a good... What would be a good background for that? Oh, just like a light pink anything. Even red would look good, right? I'm just trying to find something that I have out. I think this is a glitter red. Not sure that was the greatest choice, but my biggest thing was just to see how well, um, how clear this translucent is. That's all I want to know. Just kind of melding this down here. oven just for this but I gotta see how it's gonna look uh, do I have a smaller square that I can put this through I want to see the red in the back so because that way I can get a better idea so I'm just cutting that in just a little square not to make anything just to see how this is gonna react all right, so there we go, and we're going to go ahead and put it in the oven, and we'll see how this 
translucent is compared to, to probably Primo. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Alrighty, we are back. And I thought I'd show you that cane. So this is what it ended up being. Yeah, it's kind of a funky cane, but it's got its purpose. Um, as far as being as clear as um, Primo or even clearer, maybe slightly. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of difference, maybe because of the background that it's on. But it looks not too bad, and I didn't really press it all the way in like I should have. So you might see a little bit on the end. So we'll play with it, see what we can do with it. But it's kind of cute, I guess. Um, not as great as I would like, but oh well, it, it works. And with all my videos, you're getting me raw. So I don't practice my canes and then come back and after I perfected it to show you how I did it. Because even the ones that start out perfect, when you go and make it again, it could be not perfect. So... It's just easier to just tape it and it comes out, it comes out, if not, whatever. So what I did with all those, like um, the end pieces, they were great. Really pretty colors. So I basically just um, chopped it all up and I rolled them into a log, added a little bit of gold leaf to it. And look, we got these really pretty um, lentil beads. So these would be a nice spring bracelet or something. And then the chain, some of the chain, if I just cut it. Here, let me show you the cane. So this was the cane. Okay, so I just basically, after I chopped it and pushed it all together, I made it into a log. And that's how I made my lentil beads. And then I turned it on its side and I just went, whoa, that's kind of cool. So it's just like little chunks and stuff. So I cut little thin strips of it. And this was the earring that came from it. Oh, and of course I drop it. Okay, so I even put resin on it. Not the greatest. I was just playing with it. But look what I got out of it. So it's kind of like a little chopped, abstract little painting on the earring. I thought those turned out really cool. So what does this prove? It proves that it doesn't matter how great you are with canes. If they're wonky, if they're messed up and they're not as perfect as you wanted them to be. I mean, you saw what it looked like. So there's the cane. You know, they're not too bad, but... If I don't like it, chunk it up like this, roll it, you can make other beads, and you can make stuff like this. So there's never wasted cane, you just got to use it differently. So I hope you like that. I am going to get back on pricing all my stuff, and um, we'll see you in a couple days. So take care. Bye. I'm like an idiot half of the time. Yes, yes I do. What are you going to do about it, right?